Hey there guys, Elite Legionario here, and today I am bringing you a 4 vs 4 31k game for Rome Total War. Uh, this battle was a really excellent battle I had done probably a few weeks ago now. Um, it was a very good one, um, I just haven't got around to uploading it. Um, as you can see, I'll be in command of the Greek cities, and all my army consists of a 16 Spartans. 14 are on gold gold, and I believe 2 are on no, no upgrades. One is a paper screen, and another is just an extra unit. My allies are Phlegathon of the COH clan, an excellent player, he's playing as the Scipio Romans. Muhammad from the Heaven clan, another excellent player, playing as the Macedonians. And Greco from the Heaven clan, playing as the Scipio Romans. Um, our opponents are Titans Hades. Uh, this guy's a really good player. Um, the whole Titans clan's a good clan, in my opinion. Very tough, especially with Rome. Um, he's using the Brugio Romans. And then we have uh, Greek Cleomenus, uh, the Greek clan. Um, he is in command of Carthage, most likely because I took Greece before he could get them. Um, and I think Mo might have taken Macedon before he could get them. Um, and I want to kind of get into a little bit about Carthage and Greece in a minute uh, after I outline the armies. And then we have Brotherhood member Uther's Dragons, another excellent player. He's got the Julii Romans. And finally we have Flanking Maneuver. From the I think this is Brotherhood member Sacred. Um, so some really good players in this game. Uh, it should be a really excellent match. So... Um, I'm just going to outline my forces. I said I had 14 gold gold Spartans and I believe it was two non-upgraded ones. Now, you yeah, rumble most likely, you play most of the K players probably here, oh, Carthage beats Greece. Um, and I can tell you that's not entirely accurate. Well, Carthage can beat Greece. Um, both myself and Mo did extensive testing on this. Um, I'm going to just pause this while I explain this. Um, it's not that um, one's better than the other, it really comes down to who manages the formation best, who maintains order in their lines, because they're actually very, very equal. Um, what gives Carthage edge is Sacred Band are very good pipemen. They are not as good as uh, Spartan Oplites, but they're not far short, and they're a lot cheaper than Spartans, so you can get more of them. So, if, for instance, you have a Greek player who's brought 12 Spartan Oplites, then a Carthaginian player is going to beat him because he's going to have more numbers. If you go with the Greeks but you bring only 20, you bring some 20 Spartans but only with gold attack upgrades, the Sacred Band are going to win because they're going to be able to have enough more upgrades and still have the numbers. But if you like me now and you're playing as the Greeks and you bring 14 gold gold Spartans and you control your lines carefully, you can defeat Carthage. Carthage does is a very good counter though, is a very good counter to the Greeks, but it just it depends. Now, regardless of who wins that fight, you're going to end up with whoever wins is going to end up with very little infantry left. If I beat if I beat Cleo, Cleo's I'll probably have very few infantry left. If Cleo beats me, he's probably going to have very few infantry left. We're pretty much going to wipe each other out, no matter who, no matter the scenario. So, it's important that your allies support this to make sure you've got enough units left. So in this battle I asked Fleg to give me a couple of urbans just to make sure I got Spartans left to help them out later on and that comes in very handy. Um, but honestly it was a very close fight. I won't give away the outcome yet um, but it was really close. And I just wanted to point that out because I keep hearing oh Carthage waste Greece and it's just not true. It's it's not true. It really comes down to who who can manage their pikes the best. Carthage is an excellent counter, and if you have like a significant advantage of say six sacred band over the Spartans, and yes, you'll beat Greece. But if you have enough gold gold Spartans and you control your lines properly, you can beat Carthage. Um, I have another 44 where I use Carthage against uh, Greece, and actually Cleo had Greece at time. Um, and it was really even as well, so I'll upload that sooner or later as well. Uh, but anyway, um, let's get back into it. Let's have a look at Fleg's forces. We have five units of Praetorian Cav, two Archer Auxilia, and the rest of Urban Cohorts. Then we have Moe's forces, six um, Companion Cavalry. We have two Cretan Archers, and the rest are Royal Pikemen, all nicely rowed up and linked. Uh, so he should be good at holding. He's not going to beat Romans, but he's going to be able to hold them pretty well. Um, then we have Greco. Looks like he's got one, two, three, four, five units of Praetorian Cav, one legionary, early legionary first cohort actually, and the rest are urbans. 
Okay, seeing as he's up nice and close here, let's have a look at Uther's forces. Uther has, let's see, Uther uses some interesting builds, um, or uses this, this kind of formation all the time, but there's always a, there's a legendary first cohort here, the rest are Urmans, but he's also got a Sam like gladiator in there, and I really, I'm still trying to work out what that's about. He's an extremely experienced player, one of the best Brotherhood members in my opinion. Um, very good player indeed, um, but I've never quite worked out what the um, Sam Knight Gladiator is for. Maybe it's the two hit points, maybe it allows it to soak Peeler, I don't know. Maybe it just it works well with the Urbans, I, I should try it sometime. Then he uses a General's Armour Bodyguard. Now, when you use a General's Armour Bodyguard, what you want to really do is use it to hit the Peeler screens. It's really good at destroying them and when they're in loose formation. Um, but it has to be the General's unit. I tried this out once without the General's unit and it just routes too quickly. So you have to put the General in the unit. So it's a bit risky if you lose your General early on, but if you can do it properly, it's a good unit. Then he just has five Praetorian Cav in his own little formation here, which I've actually taken to using when I use the Lucid Cataphracts. Um, it's quite effective. So he's advancing up there towards Mo, as you can see. If we look at Titan's Hades, he's got some elite these are first co up here, and then Urbans here, and the rest are Urbans, and he's got six Praetorians, and I think he's got a couple Arch Auxilia as well. Now, it's actually quite a good idea to put the Legionary first up as a peeler screen, but only if it's got a couple of Urbans in front, like Hades is done here. That way, they'll take the peeler, because these guys are 122 men in the unit, so when they throw their peeler, they throw a lot of extra peeler, and it gives you an edge in the peeler jewel. You don't want the Legionary first cohort at the front, you want to find a couple of Urbans. The peeler screen. Um, now we look at Cleo here, he's lined himself up nicely. Now what I've done is I've condensed my line closer than Cleo at this stage, he's more spread out. Um, I personally think this method's better, um, especially if you're dealing with Rome, obviously it's necessary, but even against other pikes, I think tighter control of your lines just makes all the difference when you're fighting an equivalent pike faction. However, Cleo is a more experienced pike wielder than I am, so perhaps he's got some reason for being more spread like this. I personally have done both and I find this method of tighter lines like mine and, and no gaps to be more useful. But I mean, I might be wrong there. Um, so if we actually look at his forces, he's got, let's see, 1, he's got 4, 8, 12, 16, 18. So he's got 18 to my 16. So I've nearly got as many numbers as him, so that's why I'm going to be able to compete with him. If he'd had, if I'd only had about 12 or so, and then I brought a bunch of Cretans or something, then I really wouldn't be able to take this fight. But even so, as I said before, in this particular battle, I will most likely not come out, no matter the no matter the result here, even if I do beat Cleo in the one for one, he's probably going to destroy most, if not like probably 95% of my Spartans or 90% of my Spartans. So I've asked um, Fleg to send me some Urban so he can put them into Testudo and use Peeler because obviously the Sacred Band don't have the resistance to Peeler like Spartans, not to the same extent. Also, um, I'm just going to pause the game. Also, because he does that, if he goes into Testudo and stuff, it's going to disrupt the lines of Carthage, which means I'm going to have an edge, because I'm going to have a formation, or better formation set up over Carthage. So that's why I also asked Fleg could send some uh, urbans. It's just basically because I don't want to... I want to I'm looking, thinking long-term for the team, you know. I'm not want to get knocked out too soon. Or, like, be... be I'm, even if I beat Cleo but lose all my army, I'm not going to be able to support my allies afterwards. So I want to try and be able to support them afterwards, basically. Because if you've got plenty of Spartans left at the latest stage of the game, it's very good for your team. The Spartans are really hard for Romans to defeat. So then we have flank him. He's got a couple of Archer Auxilia, uh, Urbans, and of course he'll have the Cavalry. Victorians. And he's got a War Dog. I've seen this guy bring War Dogs before. I don't know why. But there you go. Anyway, so there's been a lot of archer skirmish going on, and for the most part, the enemy team's doing a better job of that. As you can see, Uther has brought his um, his men up. So has Hades, and they're dumping Pila into Mo. Um, Greco sent a unit of uh, urbans here, just to act as a bit of a uh, attraction to those um, Pila. But uh, manual control will be what Uther's doing, and he'll just throw some Pila in. And it's uh, Mo's really just got to hold basically. If you just keep Uther busy or anyone busy, just hold areas. It's fine because that's really all Macedon needs to do in this fight. Um, as you can see over here, Cleo brought his Peeler Spring forward, but um, Fleg just moved it, rushed his urban cohort up, just quickly got rid of it, which is good. Which means he was got he'll have to sacrifice another one of these units if he wants another Peeler Spring. 
However, Cleo has been quite busy out the back with a couple of units of Numidian mercenaries, which are at least gold gold by the looks of things, and he's using these guys to harass, and he does do a pretty good job, he gets into her arches later on with them, and he just picks away at us in the back lines, just quite a nice job of it. But at the moment, um, they are trying to skirmish us, and we are losing that, um, but we're not going to attack them. Now, as I said, when it comes to fighting like Greece versus Carthage, I, also, I haven't actually said this, but I also find the player that allows the enemy to attack them first actually, and just in the experiences I've had, tends to do better because, again, it's all about how well you can maintain your lines and your formation. The better you can do it, the higher your chances. And I find when you attack, your lines break up a little bit, so I prefer to let them come to me and then attack, even though, as a, as an over, as a rule, I would recommend using the Greeks aggressively because they are a very good aggressive faction. Um, but I, it's all about the control of the lines. And when it comes to Carthage, it's a very close matchup between the Greeks and the Carthage. You know, while, the, while the Spartans are better, um, they're not massively better, and they'll have more sacred man. So it's always a very even fight, and it comes down to that kind of control over your, um, your formation and you know what support you're getting from your allies. It can really change the difference. So as you can see, Uther is um, still just throwing into these. Um, war pikemen here but Moe's holding nicely and I mean and there's this bit of peeler dueling going on between Hades and Greco but it's pretty static and slow some fire arrows coming in there are they coming from one of, well, one of their players but they're mostly just skirmishing away with us um, and they have taken the edge that way as you can see um, these um, javelin jav cab from Cleo doing a nice job um, and it, we've definitely lost the archer duel um, but in the process of doing this, they've probably spent quite a bit of archers, archer, you know, archer ammunition. So, not a massive factor really for us. As long as we just, keep, even if we lose the missile duel, um, we probably have an infantry advantage as a team. So that's pretty good. Um, if you want to skip ahead, guys, feel free to do so. As you can see, the time is just, you know, it's probably just about halfway. Um, it is really an excellent fight. So at this stage we see Cleo starting to move up. Now I have my peel, a peeler screen here. This unit has only got... Actually no, this is a gold gold unit. Maybe I did have um, as many... I think I might have had 14 gold gold and some silver silvers. I can't actually remember the specifics. I'm pretty sure I had 16 Spartans though. Um, but Cleo does start to move up. Now I should have really... What I decided to do initially, I probably should have just forgot... Just put this back into line as a full unit but I decided to use it in conjunction with these urban cohort from Fleg to act as like a stalling force just again to try and it's going to get destroyed but it's going to help kind of disrupt the lines of Cleo's pikes so that when he gets to my main group um, his lines will be somewhat disorganized and it just helps helps me um, Cleo is a very experienced pike user though so he probably will not be falling for that but anyway it's worth a try he's still skirmishing away in the back um, picking away at the flanks here, he's getting behind our cave, behind Greco and Moe's cave, and as you can see, some of okay, no, I thought someone lost some cave, but it's not the case. Um, I think I might just go to double speed here, actually. It looks as if um, Uther has put some of his uh, urbans forward here, um, but throwing Spartans in this general direction is not, uh, sorry, not uh, Peter in this general direction towards my Sparta would, uh, my Spartans would be counterproductive um, personally it's, anyway, as you can see I, I suspect he might just be trying to get Phlegathon to waste some am ammunition on this unit of urban later on so that he can't use these guys on Cleo, I'd say that's probably what he's trying to do um, in the back here, um, Mo does a quick charge here and catches one of Cleo's Numidian mercenaries um, as Cleo's trying to nip away at his flank there. Um, and he gets one of them, which is good. Um, and he doesn't take too many losses. This unit's only down to 48, so not a bad little maneuver there by Mo. Some of his units are slightly depleted, but nothing drastic. Uh, as you can see, Greco moves up now, and he's getting into a full-on duel here. However, he's not manually controlling his peeler, so they'll throw at the Testudos. Um, which is really you got something you've got to really watch for. It's a bit frustrating sometimes. you got to watch for that. So as you can see, um, Cleo has moved up, as you can see, and that's getting close to the battle on this side. Um, Mo's still just trying to make sure these guys in this back can't can't pick away at him for too much. 
Um, I noticed at this stage that Cleo moved slightly to the, this right, so I move my forces in accordance, because I want to be all lined up. Now he goes in fully on the left here, um, and he's sort of lost, as you can see, lost a lot of order, and as you can see, the units that are stalling here are going to cause him to kind of stop. I decided to push forward to match him here. I probably should just let him keep going. Um, at this stage too, um, Flegs, one of his units gone to test Tito kind of in the middle of my formation here, which isn't ideal, it would have been better if it was slightly in front. But as you can see, um, because of the units we've put in front to stall here, what's happened is Cleo's forces have gotten kind of disorganised to a certain extent. So I push forward in over here. Um, he's probably just got a numerical advantage here. Um, now at this stage what always happens in these pike duels is they drop their pikes and bring out their swords. So you've got to press backspace all the time to make sure they keep their pikes down. Um, and it's a matter of who does that better that makes a big difference here as well. But as you can see Cleo massively loses a lot of his formation and his initial impact is huge so it initially does well but when I push my back rows in um, and the fact that I maintain my formation, and as you can see, what's going to end up sort of happening is he's going to push in, but my guys are going to start sort of coming around the sides a wee, wee bit. He starts bringing in his back rows here, um, but I've got some of Flegs guys helping me too, so this is enabling me to, you know, take the advantage in this fight pretty quickly. But even if I had not had Flegs guys here, the loss of his formation like that really gives me a significant edge. Um, he's doing all right on this side though, because he got his numbers down in better order over here. Um, Mo has brought a couple of pikes in just to reinforce me, just in case. Um, but overall, right through the centre, this is going well for my Spartans. Um, as you can see, you've got to constantly keep pressing backspace to make sure that they keep those pikes down in that duel. But um, as you can see, my guys are kind of still in lines and formations, even if it's been pushed back. Whereas um, Cleo's has been really disrupted by that. Um, and that's really working to my advantage. Um, so as you can see, it's just a big smash up pike grind, but um, as you can see, some of these sacred band are already routing, um, which is great. So at this stage, uh, a bit of a normal sort of halted peeler duel between flanking maneuver and flegs forces. Flegs bring some more guys in over here, just in case, um, as is um, flanking maneuver. It's all kind of converging on here. Uther has brought his forces up, and he's starting to engage a little bit here, um, as is Hades at this stage. Um, but nothing too much here, mostly it's just a big pike fight between myself and and Cleo. Now he's doing well over this side, but he's losing it pretty much everywhere else. He's actually doing alright on the left too, but through the centre I'm just totally winning that fight. Um, over here we see Uther bring his cab through, um, and he's going to hit some of these guys here. Um, but he quickly gets out because, as you can see, there's a lot of peeler there that can come in. Um, and that's not good. Moe's bringing his cav in. As you can see, being an opportunist, Cleo's coming in getting rid of any archers he can. Um, so, at this stage, as you can see, the, the Sacred Band have been pretty much just destroyed in the centre. Only their flanks are holding, and that's not going to be enough. Flanking Maneuver brings in some Urbans to help, but they're too late, um, and they're not going to get through this wall of Spartans. So by kind of, as I said at the start, by kind of controlling my lines as best as possible and allow him, him to attack me, having his lines broken up and with some allies support, it's allowed me to quite easily win this fight, which would otherwise be much more tighter than that. Um, at this stage, as you can see, um, Greco must have tried to cav run through somewhere here. Um, so it appears his calves gone a little jammed in there. Now here we see Mo trying to slice up the side here to get these just these last remaining sacred band in the in the wing in there. Um, and I think he's going to push right on through actually. Um, but there's nothing pinning there, so he's just going to lose those guys. But he's going to get these two, which is good because it frees up his guys there. But through the centre, as you can see, they. Um, Fleg kind of refuses his flank here and just tosses a few in on the flank just to support as well. But I mean, I've still got quite a number of Spartans left through the centre and, and these Senate forces just can't breach and there's not enough of Carthage left. And because he lost that formation, it's just not going to work. As you can see, Uther sends some forces in here. Um, he's got a few in over here as well. Uh, but for the most part, um, only the engagement's happening th between myself, Cleo, and Fleg and flanking maneuver. As you can see some cab strikes come through from Uther, but it's not very 
effective and then Fleeg's going to send a counter in but Uther is going to get out, Fleeg's going to halt the whole thing and he's going to pull out himself. As you can see now too, Flanky Maneuver is now pushing forward aggressively, trying to break through on on Fleeg. Mo is going to support with Pikes just to keep that cav from breaking through, which is a good move because it, because um, in order to remedy the problem in the centre where my Spartans are proving too difficult to break, they need to break their sides, and they're going to focus on Fleeg. As you can see, Flanky Maneuver sends his guys up the flank, but Fleeg's going to send his cav in for counter, but then so is Hades and Uther. Um, Uther also went round the side with some of his others and he's got a bit of an encirclement. But here comes Muhammad's cab and Greco's cab as well. So some good teamwork going on here. We're managing to support each other where it's needed. Uh, we're playing a more defensive role, but we're keeping our opponents at bay because we can see that my Spartans are already winning the centre quite decisively. And I've still got at least probably probably around half of them left, which is great, which is what we need. Having half of my Spartans left at this stage is really good for the long term of uh, result of the fight. So big cab strike comes through here. Um, but our guys don't do a massive amount of damage with their cab. Um, and our opponents managed to pull their cab out. So we need to get our guys out. Um, with these pikes in here, it does kind of halt them. But as you can see, there's a slice cut uh, shot coming up the flank there by Hades. And Flanky Maneuver is coming around. As you can see, he gets a couple of routes on Greco's cab. Fleeg is going to send his cab in again. Uther comes in through the front here. Um, and Uther's also got some guys on the side and you get some really nice routes going on with Fleg. So they're doing some pretty nice cab work here. But at this stage I've successfully destroyed the centre of the forces that were holding me. So I'm gonna quickly run my Spartans over and reinforce this area um, with my Spartans because as you can see most of Fleg's infantry is starting to rout at this stage. But the cab numbers in the area is pretty good. Um, a few of Moe's cab routes I believe. Um, and then of course we got Cleo coming in the back with his little Numidians there, um, which, you know, it's in the flank, so it will do some dangerous. As you can see, there's a pretty big route on Cav happening there, and it is pretty nasty for us. Um, Moe's routes, um, a lot of, quite a few of Fleg's routed, but some of Greco's routed, but in the process, most of the Allied Cav has been lost as well. Um, as you say, I don't think Uther's got much left. Uther's only got a little bit left. Um, and at this stage, I'm able to pull my Spartans in and stop these um, these urbans from moving through our flank here. And of course, Moe's reinforced as well. Over the other side, nothing much is happening. Um, I brought a, left a few Spartans here just in case there was a big assault on the centre. And for the most part, I've sent at least half my Spartans this way. And with them in here, there's no more cash strikes coming through. Uh, I'm going to put in a few more Spartans to support this area. Um, but good, good, good ally numbers going on here of infantry and. Basically, they did win the Cav fight, but, it, well, actually, no, we're pretty good with Cav, actually. In fact, I take that back. It was more of a draw. Um, they got initial advantage going there, but their losses were enough to make it uh, negligible. Um, and, as you can see, we're taking my Spartans, Royal Pikemen, and the Urbans around here. We are holding the enemy off, and we get flanking maneuvers general. Now... Greco makes a pretty good move here. He starts attacking on this flank um, to occupy this flank um, quite a bit. Uh, if there's something going on on the other flank and there's a lot of enemy focus over there, it can be a good idea to attack on the other flank. And it was a good move on Greco's part because by attacking on this flank, um, he divides Hades' attention. And if he does well on this flank, um, then if we take a loss over here, we've still got this flank, you see, and we can wheel her up. Moe's just holding in the centre. Um, we've reformed all our pipe lines here. Fleg was pretty much destroyed because he became the focus of the entire battle there, but he did, didn't did go down very easily, um, and he gave us time to organise ourselves to win in the centre with my Spartans and uh, come and help, and it was good ally support there. So at this stage, seeing an opportunity here, they send their cav down here because there's no cav down here, um, but we see that they're going to do that. We're going to quickly get our guys down here and reinforce this particular end of the battle um, so that we can try and make up for it. So here we see Flanky Maneuver trying to slice in here. He hasn't got much momentum on his charge and his guys are a bit winded, but he does get a bit of a route. However, Fleeg's still got some of his cav left. He's going to come in, get a counter strike through here. Moe's going to reinforce with pikes, hold that area out, and as you can see, that kills 
uh, flanking maneuvers cavalry or routes it. At this stage, um, I'm shifting my Spartans down here. Uh, I'm going to try and reinforce as well because um, Hades has still got a fairly high number of infantry, but we've got we've we've pretty much got the advantage here. Although Uther has got pretty much all his infantry left as well, and never want to take chances when you're fighting someone like Uther's dragons. He's an excellent player, and he can still turn things. So things are looking pretty good for us. We take the cavalry advantage. We won one flank, but there's still plenty of enemy infantry. Here we see. Fled going from the side and Greco going from the back and that does cause a pretty good route there to be honest but at this stage um, Uther's going to try and reinforce over here I'm going to push my Spartans up as you can see I've still got a pretty decent number here several units that are in their 50s, 60s, one that's in the 70s um, more than half strength units of Spartans there is, that's going to be enough to take these four urbans down so I'm going to quickly rush here and make sure no more use today. they are running from the battle I'm going to push forward and make sure that these four urbans cannot reinforce over here. So I'm going to engage them. And that, that at least Mo frees up Mo to send reinforcements in um, to help. Our allies have lost their leader. This turn of events may make them lose heart. So at this stage, um, Greco's doing a pretty good job out here. He's got some good support from his allies, and things are looking pretty good. Greco's got a couple of infantry units up here, which he forgot about, so we had to kind of remind him because um, they're up on the other flank there um, but at this stage um, I've got the urbans fully in these urbans engaged over here um, this unit's actually facing backwards so he must have missed micro there and I throw some more into the center my Spartans to the center at this stage flanking maneuvers got a few infantry units here but um, we've still got quite a good number of infantry and we've got our cav Uther's still got some cav flanking maneuvers got a cav unit and there's still a couple of urbans out here at this stage Greco charges into Uther's cave here, trying to kill his general. Um, Moe's going to support him because there's going to be infantry coming in here, which could destroy these winded units of cave. Um, Uther's men hold, um, but at this stage we've got some pretty good infantry supremacy of the field. And over here, where there's several units of of Uther's um, infantry, he's not going to be able to get him into the fight over here because I'm just keeping my pressure on the Spartans to keep him out so that my guys had the advantage, my allies had the advantage over here um, with Mo and Greco um, and, and a couple of my Spartan units that I've put over here. Over here uh, we can see some good cav maneuver and a bit of infantry support have actually routed Greco and I believe yeah it was Greco's cav so these guys could come around the flank here um, if we're not careful but we have got the initial advantage here uh, we're pushing up and pushing forward um, I accidentally pushed too far forward here. I didn't realize I went this far with this unit of Spartans. Because um, that means Earth is going to kind of come around behind with this unit. I didn't actually see that I did that because as you can see it's not in phalanx formation just yet. I missed that. Um, but as you can see at this stage Uther's infantry is pretty much on its own. Um, and he won't be able to hold out that long against this many of us. Um, I decided to turn my guys around here in the hopes I get this cab unit that's trying to hit my flank. Uh, but I am actually outflanked there. Um, just because I made a bit of a blunder. But at least keeps two, it's holding two units of Uther's inventory busy, which should really be over here helping. Um, which would be better used over here helping. At this stage I decided to push some guys around, seeing as I can see that my allies are in good hand over here. Um, good numbers, uh, flanking maneuver hits the back here. Um, but I mean most still got a lot of pikes left, or quite a number of them. Um, and there's still a few Agarico's units around as well. So I'm going to hold these guys out. I'm going to reinforce with some Spartans, keep them busy. Um, and I'm in the center here helping out as well. And as you can see, Moe's going to start reinforcing over here. Flanky maneuvers, Urban's finally route. And um, at this stage, I'm fully engaging over here with Uther's forces. Um, and as you can see, Uther's forces are now surrounded by Greco, Macedon, and myself, and are uh, still being worn down. Over here, I'm able to reinforce with more Spartans. Once I get my lines organized, I'm able to defeat, start defeating these Urbans. Um, and because the battle was won on this section, now we can pull more infantry in, and Uther is now effectively sandwiched between all of us um, at this stage. He does a pretty good job of holding out in the end there, though. Um, we are still just fighting away over there but as you can see Uther is now completely encircled um, and his general's unit still alive I think, his general, yes his general is alive 
Um, but as you can see, this guy's just getting completely sandwiched there and worn down between Spartans, Raw Pikemen, and Urbans. And then over here, his infantry is getting worn down by my Spartans as well uh, at this stage. So, pretty close game in all honesty. Um, and I really enjoyed this one. Um, some great teamwork on both sides. Uh, but because I managed to take that initial edge, and I think in the middle with my Spartans over Carthage, it, it left us with a pretty significant infantry advantage um, towards the later stage of the fight, which really, really made the difference uh, in this fight. So, actually, excuse me one moment. Yes, 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 would you shut it? Sorry about that. Um, sometimes I get annoyed with their speeches. Um, yeah, but as you can see, yeah, because we had that got that pretty initial good start against Cleo in the centre with Carthage, it allowed us to have that um, infantry advantage towards the end. So I come up with top kills on my team with 1,873. But in all honesty, when you're playing as the Greeks, you want to be probably getting at least 15, 1,600 kills with them. Um, I mean, they're, they're really a centre faction. You know, you, you shove them in against the enemy infantry and let them go. Um, I mean, and that was and that was really key that we were able to beat Carthage quickly, with, and we we'll still have a good number of my Spartans left, because at that later end of the stage of the fight with those extra Spartans, it just really makes a massive difference. Uh, my allies did some really great supporting on the flanks, giving me some support where I needed it, especially Fleg. Um, and as you see, they've got a nice thirteen hundred thousand for Mo. He he mostly just held with. Macedon, which is all he needs to do, keep his opponents busy in support with cavalry. Doesn't mean he's got a lot of kills, but it's still a very important role. And you should never base it on kills anyway. And then Greco's got a nice, well rounded 1139, some great work on his flank there. Hades is 1324, and then all the others are sort of in the 1100 zone. So, I mean, it's a close battle. It was a really good game. Some pretty good cav moves coming in from Uther flanking and Hades on fleek, which did pretty much destroy his infantry. Um, but they didn't manage to get that decisive edge. Had they done so and managed to wrap around the flanks, my Spartans could have been in trouble. But um, a really good game. If we look at the statistics, obviously all I have are Spartans and pretty high kill counts. The 190 for a couple of them, 175, 160, 145, 130, 141, 167. There's some pretty high kill counts for my Spartans, which allows me to come away with a really nice kill count of 1,873, which is pretty good, you know, in that sense, but I mean Spartans really should get a high kill count in most battles. That you know they're pretty expensive unit, but they are a very powerful units, so you can use them pretty effectively. So good game to Fleg, Mo, Greco, Hades, Cleomenus, Uther, and Flanky Maneuver. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please leave comments, guys. Tell me what you think. Did you enjoy it? What do you think we could have done better? What do you think the enemy could have done better? So on and so forth. Constructive criticism is always really good. So. Thanks again guys for watching, hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you soon next time.